Hey there, it is Debbie and Doug, not Jim. And we are here for the Midday Minute, episode 49. How's it going, Doug? Going great. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be back on the Midday Minute. Well, we are certainly happy to have you here. Um, the first time and perhaps the only time you were on the Midday Minute was episode 10 in November of 2019. Um, so there's a through line here. We're going to be talking about the same thing, just a little different this year. And that is, uh, at long last, we're going to be talking about the impact grant renewals and the plan for announcing those, uh, those grantees. But before we get into that, we have a comment contest winner from episode 48. Um, episode 48 was right after the new year. So a lot's happened since then, but... We want to celebrate, nonetheless, the winner of the comment contest, which was Gina Frank from um, Golden, Colorado. So congratulations, Gina. Um, you can let us know uh, where, where you would like us to designate that $50 soft credit in your name just by commenting below, or you can email us at enf at elks.org. Um, all right, if you'd like to comment on uh, this episode, please do so below and use the hashtag ENF midday for your chance to win $50, uh, a $50 soft credit. All right, Doug, here yes. we sit early February, probably three months uh, after when we would usually be announcing uh, both new impact grants and impact grant renewals. Um, but we don't need to, to spend too much time on reminding everybody how things really changed in 2020. So um, we knew early on that we were going to have to probably that we were going to pull back on new grants for new new impact grant projects, but we were committed to our impact grant renewal projects that were going on in 2020. So why don't you tell us a little bit about our thinking and what the process has been and where we are at right now? Sure. So, like you said, we want to continue to support our impact grant projects. Um, they have put a lot of work into getting approved for an impact grant project. Many of them have been doing it for several years and um, it, we really just would hate to have uh, a funny year like this throw that all off. So um, we did delay the renewal application process a bit. We kept the applications open until December 31st. Um, and uh, the reason that we are waiting until now to uh, announce appro approvals is that we wanted to see those fourth quarter slash final reports come in so that we could get um, a complete picture of how the year played out, how funds were spent in the fourth quarter, and how much is left uh, so that we can adjust uh, for 2021. Um, I think it actually worked out really great. Um, Obviously there were so many hurdles, particularly in the second quarter this past year, where there was more funds than usual left at the end of the third quarter. So we really did need to see um, how the fourth quarter was going to go. And a lot of lodges were able to do a lot of great in their communities. So um, it's great to read about, and it really does make the uh, renewal process uh, a little bit easier on our end. Um, yeah, and I would say probably for the, the grantees as well. So uh, we kept everybody in the loop, uh, what we were thinking and what we were planning. Um, and then you got to really take a, a deep dive, I think, with the third quarter reports, right? You know, there were fits and starts. Some people were able to get started in the first quarter. And, and I should say that impact grants are over a calendar year. So they're supposed to start right. January 1st and go through December 31st. So there was some activity first quarter, right? Second right. quarter, we know what happened. Third quarter, things started to, to, you know, people were able to emerge and do some stuff. But why don't you tell us a little bit about where we landed uh, in October after the third quarter reports um, and what we ended up doing with that? Yeah, with the uh, third quarter reports, I think what we really discovered was that we needed more information. Right. Um, uh, so, you know, I compiled everything that I had and, and where we were at and uh, then decided that we were going to um, ask for more, more info before deciding on, on the renewals. Uh, we opened up um, the renewal application uh, in November and um, we really just kind of gave lodges a little bit more time to put everything together and uh, you know let things settle out naturally rather than trying to force everything in at the end. Right. 
so how many um how many grant how many projects did we end up you know inviting to submit a renewal application sure so we invited 53 lodges to submit uh renewal applications we had 51 of those lodges um follow through and submit those uh, applications. Uh, we also invited 10 other lodges to um, do impact grant extensions. So uh, in projects where maybe they weren't able to do as much as they would have liked to, uh, they can purely extend the funds without having to go through the full application process. And so they will be impact grantees in, in 2021, just using the funds that they have left over from last year. Right. All right, so we had uh, in the end 51 submitted. 51. Right? right. All right. Yeah. And then what have you been doing uh, throughout the month of January with yeah, so, um, reviewing and talking to people and all of that? Yeah, as the fourth quarter reports have been coming in, I have been inviting uh, our project coordinators to meet with me over zoom um i think i had a couple that were just a phone call you know whatever everyone's comfortable with but zoom where we can um just to chat about the projects and about how things went and how things are going to move forward and and what our our uh, state of the impact grant is um, and it's just been really nice to put faces to names um, in a lot of cases and you know i'm the liaison between uh, our impact grantees and the enf and uh, I'm doing my best to have 64 2020 impact grant projects completely memorized with all the contacts and and what has been going on in this uh, crazy year. And every time that I get an opportunity to um, talk with these folks, it makes my job easier. It helps me stay organized, and I always learn a lot of you know great information um, about these projects uh, when I'm able to talk with them one on one. All right, so everybody understands that we are obviously committed to our renewal grantees. Why don't you tell us some of the exciting things that you're looking forward to now that you've talked to the, you know, to the project managers and what's gonna happen in 2021? This is where you'd like me to give some highlights. Give some highlights. Yeah, absolutely, that's the fun part. Um, so a couple of projects that uh, I thought did really great that um, I think deserve some shout outs, we've got uh, Salem, Oregon, Lodge 336, uh, their Salem Welcome Home uh, project. They were entering uh, year two for 2021, so they started during uh, 2020. Heck of a time to start an impact grant project. Um, they were able to continue executing their project throughout the entire year uh, by, you know, following some st uh, strict safety precautions and um, providing supplies through contactless delivery. Um, they were able to provide um, essential household items to over 80 veterans and their families uh, in their community. And uh, I thought that was uh, awesome. And they also were very close to the wildfires um, up there. So sure. uh, they really persevered through a tough year. Incredible. Um, yeah. Another lodge I'd like to give a shout out to is uh, Zephyr Hills, Florida, Lodge 2731. Hello, mm -hmm. Judy. Uh, their project, Feed the Kids, um, provides food for local children during the summertime when school's uh, not in session. Typically, these kids are getting uh, as many as two meals a day uh, from school. So in the summer, there's, there's really you know, that need for food. So they adapted this year and did a drive through lunch on the go program at the lodge uh, where uh, families could drive through and, and pick up food. And on Wednesdays, they also were providing books and activities. So That's great. Um, yeah, they, they did a great job. Um, another, I'm just gonna keep rolling keep, through these. Keep rolling. <laughs> another uh, first year project was uh, Red Wing, Minnesota, Lodge 845. Their project is HEART, uh, one of our classic ELK acronyms, stands for Help Empower At-Risk Teens. So uh, they're working with uh, students in their area and providing activities and resources and supplies to uh, students. So one of the things that they really uh, tried to focus on this year was patience, creativity, and flexibility. And uh, one of the things I really like that they did uh, with this project is uh, they actually recorded short uh, crock pot cooking tutorials for the kids. Uh, they delivered crock pots to the students and uh, gave them some of the, 
the materials to make these recipes. Um, and they created a private Facebook group so the kids could uh, share pictures when they finished making, uh, making the food. And um, I believe they did a, a raffle of a gift card at least once or twice uh, to help incentivize it. And I just thought it was a really neat idea. I love that so much. And a little fun fact, you're one of your predecessors in the uh, SIP office, Chelsea Dennis, loved crock pot cooking. So mm. she would have loved that. <laughs> well, it's the right time of year for it. That's for, for sure, sure. For sure. Yeah. What else? One um, or two more. Yeah, I've got two more. So uh, Allegheny, Pennsylvania, Lodge 339. And I I'm somewhat confident I said that city name <laughs> correctly. Uh, their project is called the Yellow Glove Project. Uh, mm -hmm. They're entering year six of their impact grant. So um, what they do is they provide cleaning supplies and hygiene supplies for uh, families in need in their community. Um, and uh, they had a little bit of a hiccup at the beginning of the year because cleaning supplies suddenly became the hot items um, yes. everywhere in the country. Uh, but once they were able to get uh, everything back in stock, uh, they were able to provide over a thousand bags of supplies to people in need in their community this year. So uh, that's really awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, All right. And then last uh, but not least. One more. I, if anyone at home is paying attention, I am bouncing around the country very purposefully <laughs> uh, with regions. So. All right. So we're uh, leaving Pennsylvania and going to uh, Gilbert, Arizona, Arizona, Lodge 2848, one more first year project. Uh, their project's called Caring is Sharing. Uh, so they're providing food and clothing to uh, students in their community. Um, once the schools were able to open back up in the fall, uh, they really went gung-ho and, and did a lot. They gained a really great partnership with the local food bank. Um, that's one thing I would say uh, for anyone who's looking into becoming an impact grantee in the future, uh, partnerships with uh, other local organizations are critical for uh, the success of an impact grant. And so um, with that help, they were able to provide 394 boxes of food to students and their family in the fourth quarter. And they have some really nice stories about um, going shopping with some families to, to get clothes for the students. So uh, heartwarming all around. Absolutely. Those are some great examples. And, you know, you mentioned partner organizations. Of course, the hallmark of an impact grant is that it's Elks led, Elks driven, and, you know, has significant Elks involvement. But there's no reason that you, that can't happen along with being, uh, you know, a partner with an organization that's doing food distribution or whatnot. You can still, Elks can still make it their own. And we see time and time again that that happens. So. Um, that's great. Yeah. Why don't you kind of explain just a little bit our commitment to our renewal projects. So, you know, we, we start with new projects, but then we look at years two, three, and you mentioned Allegheny was in year seven. So what does that mean? <laughs> right. So uh, typically uh, what we want to do is support the lodges uh, to a full extent through years one, two, and three. Um, after year three, what we're hoping is that lodges are able to provide a little bit of sustainability for their project, whether they're fundraising or they're adding partner organizations that can provide um, parts of their project, uh, or they're supplementing with uh, other grants like the Gratitude Beacon or, or Spotlight. Um, so typically the funding will start to uh, incrementally lower as you move beyond, but that doesn't mean that an impact grant project has to end after year three. Um, of course, we have many projects that have gone beyond and uh, are have gone past year 12 even at this point. So right. um, we're happy to continue to support um, as best we can while trying to make room for new projects as well. Thank you for that. Um, we started the impact grants in 2008. That was the first year that we awarded, I believe 24 or 25. And we don't have any from that original, you know, inaugural group. Um, but we do have one from the next year, 2009, that's still going strong. And that's uh, Rhode Island's East Bay Cares, right? Correct, um, Lodge 1860. Lodge 1860. Can you give us a, just a brief little update on what they're doing after all the, you know, a dozen years? Um, they are still providing food to people in need in their community. That's um, fantastic. Yeah. So important now, right? We've seen so many 
you know, we've talked about this throughout the, uh, the pandemic, of course, so many of the grants are going to support uh, hunger and hunger issues across uh, different communities. So fantastic. Yeah. All right, so what can our impact grant uh, project, project managers expect? Uh, they are gonna hear from me very soon. Um, I think we're looking to uh, get those approvals through the grants dashboard in the next few days. Uh, okay. So they should be getting emails from us. Um, we'll be looking to get assurances sent out so that we can get those back and send new grant funds um, without delaying too much further into February. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. We're so proud of all of the work um, and, and difficult work that uh, these project managers have been able to navigate through with the pandemic and all of the challenges. And as you mentioned, there were, you know, a, about a dozen that weren't able to, to do what they intended to do, what we funded them to do for obvious reasons, but they're going to pick back up and start again in 2021. But these other 51 are going to continue to do what they've been doing throughout 2021. Um, so we're looking forward to that and getting, getting going again uh, toward the end of our fiscal year, actually. Um, so, you know, April 1st is just around the corner and I'm sure some of our viewers are actually wondering what's gonna happen next. And um, I'd like to say, Jim isn't with us today because he is putting all the final touches on our fiscal year 2022 budget and getting that out to our board of trustees because they're gonna be meeting next week uh, to go over the budget and hopefully approve all the budget components. Um, but we're kind of looking at the beginning of 2022 very much like we looked at 2021, which is a slower start, you know, until people, more and more people start to get vaccinated and, and whatnot. So um, we're pretty confident that come April 1st that we'll be launching with the gratitude grants, but we do believe that um, the Beacon Grant and the Spotlight Grant will be uh, launching later in the year, probably around June 1st. Um, uh, the Spotlight Grant last year launched on June 1st, the Beacon Grant on August 1st, but I think, I think we're gonna be in a, good, a better position this year to, to launch both of them on June 1st if not July 1st. Now the impact grant, uh, Doug and I have been talking a lot about, we believe that there's going to be, the climate is going to be conducive to new impact grant projects for 2022. So we're gonna start putting together that plan and thinking about that and talking about that and getting uh, that information out there so that you can start thinking about maybe what you would do in your community if you haven't already received an impact grant. Um, but again, we're as always, we're committed to our, to the good work that our, um, renewal grants are, have already started to do. So that's kind of what we're thinking right now. Uh, people can look forward to at least the gratitude grant becoming available on uh, April 1st and then uh, the next rollout would, will likely be on June 1st. But you know, everything's subject to change. And that's, that's, there's still some uncertainty there that we're dealing with, but that's what we're thinking right now. Um, Doug, did you have anything else that you wanted to, to mention in closing? I think I have said all I have. <laughs> okay, well, we wrapped up the smaller the deadline and then the follow up for all the smaller grants. Um, that was December 31st. So um, we had a record breaking year with our spotlight grants and beacon grants and uh, gratitude grants and, and we'll be talking about more of that later. But again, um, it was a fantastic year for the SIP and I know I can say at least for myself and you know our, our SIP staff, we are in awe every single day day that we are able to go through uh, and read and approve um, the projects. And um, it's just so, so encouraging and so heartwarming um, to know that our grant funds are going to make a, a visible and important difference in communities across the country. So um, Doug and, and the SIP team have done a fantastic job, but you know we couldn't do what we do without all the volunteers out there doing what you do. So. Um, Elks Always Care has really resonated this, this year more than ever. So it's been a great year. All right, well, I would be remiss without also giving a quick plug to the Legacy Awards deadline is Friday, February 5th at 11.59 a.m. Central Time. So if you have a child or grandchild of a dues paying Elks member, make sure that's a high school senior, make sure they know about the scholarship. You know, also, if you know anybody in your lodge that has a, a high school senior who's a child or a grandchild, make sure that they know because that deadline is coming soon. So that is that. 
apply. All right, well, Doug, um, hopefully people are gonna comment below. Um, and you know, if they like the episode, hopefully they're gonna give us a thumbs up. And this is where Jim usually says, and if you didn't like it, you can give it a thumbs down. And I usually don't participate in that. So, but I'm gonna do it this time. Hopefully nobody's gonna be in that situation, but if you, did, uh, if you didn't like it, thumbs down but be sure to, to share uh, the YouTube channel with you know, your social network so that other people can uh, be aware of what we're doing. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please you know, tap that button, smash the bell, whatever they say uh, to get you to subscribe and you will be notified every time we post uh, the incredible content that we're posting so that you know what we're doing on, and you can, you know, keep in touch with, with all the cool things that's happening uh, at the Elks National Foundation. So, all right, Doug, well, thanks for all you're doing and looking forward to getting those notifications out and uh, posting to the website so everybody can look through um, what the grant projects are and getting those checks out the door in the, the coming weeks. So thanks everybody. Until next time, be safe. Bye. <laughs>